Hi, I'm Ashton, and today I wanted to talk about something that was suggested to me on Instagram, and that is performative environmentalism. Oh boy, this is a patches and parley, meaning that I'm going to be sewing a patch onto my jean jacket while I talk about a topic that is generally political or LGBTQIA plus related, and today it's obviously political. Environmentalism is a big deal. Uh, and it is capitalized upon a lot, and it is used as a performative way of activism a lot. Um, performative activism is a huge issue and topic in general, but today I'm focusing specifically on environmental stuff because A, it's really interesting to me, B, it was suggested, and C, it can tie into some of my other favorite topics, i.e. capitalism. Today I'm sewing on this little Unlucky 13 patch. It is from Life Club, who is a really cool patches and pins maker person. I think it's two people that run it. Um, based in the UK that donates a shit ton of their profits to a animal rescue near them every year, or every month actually, so they're cool. I like their stuff. I have a few enamel pins by them as well, but this is my only patch and I'm sewing it on today because 13 is the number of years we have left if uh, we don't abolish capitalism, so. That was a joke to be clear, but it's not a very funny one because it's pretty close to being true. One of the first issues that I wanted to touch on with performative environmentalism is straws. You have no idea how much straws piss me off, and I made a video about this a year ago, but I don't even think I talked about it as much as I could now. Um, I definitely know far more about it now than I did then. Straws are something that a shit ton of disabled people need to drink and therefore survive. However, straws are also being targeted as something to ban because they are plastic and they pollute the ocean. But the thing is, if people that claim to, you know, really care about the environment actually did their fucking research, they would know that about 0.03% of the pollution in the ocean is made of straws. And, um, 43% of it is made out of abandoned fishing equipment. Who's doing the environment a bigger favor here? Me, who uses the occasional plastic straw because I have a lot of sensory issues, but doesn't eat any meat, or your average omnivore that doesn't use plastic straws because she's environmentally cautious? Just wondering. Just wondering. Genuine question. I love that I'm starting out this video really fucking salty already. It's great. I know you guys are gonna love this. Um, this was recently a whole issue brought up again because Canada is thinking about no, I think they are um, banning plastic straws, which is not great. And you know, it's seen as a huge environmental step forward, but honestly, I think what we all need to fucking do is recognize that capitalism is kind of the root of the environmental problem. Now, I could go on and on forever about straws, but that's not what I'm gonna do today, because that could be a whole separate video about how people love to use anything as an excuse for ableism, um, and how people believe that disabled people don't deserve the right to, I don't know, fucking drink water because it's a tiny bit harmful to the ocean when in reality the things that we should be focusing on are large fishing companies and the environmental impact of the US military. I feel like a lot of people that go by that, you know, every little bit counts philosophy, like, like I get it. I get that you want to think that your, you know, silicone straw is making a huge difference, but in reality, it does not matter how many people in the United States start using metal straws. It really does not matter. What matters is that giant corporations do not give a shit about the health of the environment. The reason that I bring up straws is I feel like it's an extremely good microcosm for the issue as a whole, because straws are something people use to show that like, oh, I'm doing such great things for the environment, praise me, call me your mother savior, I don't know where I'm going with this. Whereas the real issue lies within capitalism and meat consumption and honestly, imperialism, colonialism, like everything contributes to climate change in a much larger way than most people that talk about it acknowledge. Also to be clear, I'm not going to debate whether or not climate change exists in this video because dozens of people have done it far better than I can, and at this point it's not something that I see as debatable. If you don't think climate change exists, then you're simply ignoring things that are happening. Like you're willingly putting on earmuffs and a blindfold. If at this point you don't wanna believe in climate change, fine. I know I'm not gonna change your mind, but you know, in 20 years when your beachside property is underwater, don't blame me. I, as like a core part of my political beliefs, don't believe that capitalism and a healthy environment can coexist. The thing is people love to feel good about what they do individually and one way for a lot of people to do that is to use metal straws and it is to use like reusable grocery bags. And sure, that's not making a negative impact on anything, but it's such a tiny minuscule thing that when you say every little bit counts, 
I don't think you're getting the point. Because sure, millions of consumers could switch to metal straws and reusable bags, but at the end of the day, those giant companies that are contributing to climate change aren't going to stop doing what they're doing because capitalists just want to make money. They give no shits about the health of the earth or the environment. They just want to continue hoarding wealth. And that's not going to change because one person starts using a metal straw. I feel like the problem that I have mainly is that people think that tiny, tiny things that they're doing can make a difference. And they can, sure, whatever. That can be true in like local politics and like local elections. But there are billions of people. It doesn't matter how many of us use metal straws. It matters how many of us are consuming fish. It matters how many of us are giant billionaire company owners that pollute the environment because they want more money. Because there's a lot of those. There's far too many of those. Those shouldn't exist, but they do. The majority of people that, you know, claim to be super great for the environment because they use metal straws or talk about using their reusable cup and how much that's doing to save the world. Those people, they see one person posting about plastic straws killing turtles and then they decide to do that without actually looking into it. If people genuinely cared about the environment as much as they say they do, a shit ton less people would eat fish. A shit ton less people would eat red meat, or any meat for that matter. One of the main reasons that I went vegetarian six or seven years ago was because I researched it, <laughs> and I know how bad eating fish and eating meat is for the planet. And I genuinely don't understand why people are so, so passionate about banning straws when that's such a tiny, tiny issue next to the giant impact of capitalism and of the US military. Like, those things are big, big structural issues that need to be changed. And not using straws, sure, it might save a few turtles, but but in the long run, my dude, where do you think the turtles are gonna go? They're not gonna go to like your little straw-free haven, okay? They don't have anywhere to live because fishing is killing every single ocean environment that exists. People wanna feel good about themselves so bad, and I get it, because I do too, everybody does. But giving yourself this savior complex because you do one thing for the environment, they, in the end isn't making that much of a difference is kind of ignorant. Another thing is that blaming climate change on individuals is so convenient for the corporations that are actually doing the most damage. You can't blame the impact on climate on single individuals. Like, it's not my fault that I need a straw sometimes to drink. You know, if there's one person that we can blame climate change on, honestly, I would say it's Adam Smith. The motherfucker invented capitalism. The people that have a shit ton of money, they could be spending it on, I don't know, feeding hungry people, housing homeless people, even though that's a whole other issue and the housing market should be abolished completely. And I've talked about why I hate billionaires, millionaires before, but really, people like Elon, Mu Elon Musk could be doing so much. He could be building solar panels. He wants to take a rocket to the fucking moon because that man knows the earth is gonna be uninhabitable pretty soon and he's rich enough to just get the fuck out of it and not have to worry about it with the rest of us peasants, okay? Like, <laughs> focusing on individual actions when it comes to climate change is so convenient for corporations. Corporations love that because that means they don't have to take responsibility for the giant things that they're doing that destroys the environment. I believe when it comes to saving the environment, the emphasis should not be put on individual action, because that's what it is currently. You know, when you talk about saving the environment, you don't talk about taxes on giant corporations for their emissions. You don't talk about the incredibly detrimental impact that the US military has had on the environment. You just talk about turning off the water when you brush your teeth. And, and yeah, is that like a morally good thing to do? Sure. I'm not going to like say that you're a bad person for trying to help the environment on the tiny scale that you can. But what we really need to be doing is changing the way that the system works and reorganizing literally everything so we don't all fucking die and have capitalists like try to sell us air, you know? Because it's gonna happen. And the Lorax, the Lorax fucking warned you. <laughs> the problem is only governments have the power to keep giant international corporations like Nestle and ExxonMobil in check. I, as an individual consumer, can't really change that unless you guys want to like elect me for president in which case i'm destroying the whole system from the inside out but without major institutional change nothing's gonna get done even though the government has the power to limit those corporations in what they do or at least partially they don't want to because the government is you know funded by billionaires and a lot of those people are lobbyists for the coal industry and that's why trump wants you know coal mining to continue so fucking badly because it's great for the economy 
and it's, you know, killing the earth very quickly, but that doesn't matter to him because he's being paid off. Like, that's what how the government is not democratic. I realize that I sound like an absolute fucking conspiracy theorist, but just look at the sources in my description, okay? Just, just do that for me. Cool. Thanks. Bye. You know, the U.S. values democracy so much, but when it comes down to it, it's money that holds power. It's not people. Oh my god, insert that that one H-bomber guy video where he talks about, I bet you didn't think I could make this into a rant about capitalism. That's me right now. Oh yeah, here it comes, baby. The generic 10 minute rant about how capitalism is bad that I do at the end of every video now. That's right, I made yet another video to turn out to secretly be all about capitalism. You thought I couldn't do it, but I did! I guess it also kind of sucks. Well, not kind of, it does suck. That when people want to be informed on the climate, they'll just go to the top few links. Like, they won't look up things about capitalism or corporations or government lobbying. Like, they're gonna look up, how do I make a difference? And that's gonna come up with the things that I was talking about before. Metal straws, shorter showers, stuff like that, that isn't going to make a difference in the long run. Like, I'm sorry, but statistically, your metal straw does jack shit. Like, not statistically significant. What is statistically significant is the 71% of emissions that come from the top 100 companies. Also, I'm going to put a ton of links in the description for your reading pleasure, just so that you guys can stay kind of caught up and um, know what the heck I'm talking about, because I've probably already read all the things that I'm going to put below, but like, it's always good to share the knowledge. So I don't know how many people outside of America, or honestly, even inside of America, are aware of this, but the current head of the EPA is named Andrew Wheeler. And Andrew Wheeler was a coal lobbyist for years and years and years, and he's the man running the Environmental Protection Agency. Funny coincidence, honestly. It's not like that was done on purpose. There's no way that was done on purpose. If you're trying to convince me that this coal lobbyist cares about the environment, I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. It's pretty clear to me at this point that capitalism isn't the fucking answer because things just keep getting worse, including the environment. No one's doing jack shit to help it because the government is made up of, you know, people that are paid off by coal lobbyists and that's a whole other issue. Well, it's not a whole other issue. Everything is intrinsically connected. But, with all that being said, here's Ashton's top tip for saving the environment. Destroy capitalism and abolish the US military. It's infuriating to me that the amount of, you know, environmentalism online right now is so huge, yet it's all about personal actions and tiny little things that people are doing when what we really need is a fucking revolution. Like, I'm ready to get my Molotov cocktail going, okay? And I know not all of you are gonna agree with me. I know I'm like a radical leftist or whatever. But honestly, if you look at the statistics and you do some rational thinking, you're gonna figure out pretty quick that capitalism isn't the answer. People are misinformed everywhere. And that is, you know, inherently a huge problem with democracy. But when people are misinformed to the extent that they are today, where they are willing to go to extreme ends and, and do not only mental gymnastics, but like mental ski jumping, to find a way to justify their own actions, it's it's not going to be fixed through democracy. Anyway, so now that I feel like I've ranted about capitalism for a solid amount of time, we're going to move on to militarism and the US military, because that is another huge, huge issue environmentally right now that nobody wants to talk about because, you know, support the troops, ooh <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever said. Speaking out against the military is not a very popular thing, but um, I'm going to do it. Because fuck it. For clarification, I'm not talking about your Uncle Tim Bob that was in the military. I'm talking about the military and the Department of Defense as a whole and the damage that it causes as a system. Cool. Fun fact about the United States. The United States Department of Defense is the largest institutional user of petroleum and the single largest producer of greenhouse gases in the world. Bigger than any corporation is the United States Department of Defense. And the other issue with that is the U.S. military's impact and reach is so large that it's extremely difficult to calculate. So most things that estimate the U.S. military's environmental impact are probably underestimates. So Superfund sites are things that are designated through the EPA as, like, contaminated places, right? And, um, and fun fact, nearly 900 of the current 1,200 United States Superfund sites are abandoned military bases. Um, so even within our own fucking country, <laughs> the United States military is absolutely awful when it comes to, you know, even being, like, neutral on the environment. They're just real bad. 
like blatantly, completely, really bad. Oh, not to mention the 60 nuclear weapons that the United States dropped on the Marshall Islands, causing an extremely increased rate in cancer, of course disproportionately affecting people of color because that's where the United States just happened to decide to do all of their bomb testing. Hmm, wonder why. On top of all of that as well, the, it's estimated that the US military is responsible for approximately 90% of the desertification in Iraq. Um, it is responsible for a shit ton of depleted uranium which in all honesty should be considered a fucking war crime. And then there's the open air pits where the US military just kind of burns the things that they don't want to use anymore. Oh, and I didn't even mention that the Navy uh, dumps thousands, hundreds of thousands of tons of toxic chemicals that have been shown to impact babies' brains into the ocean, including heavy metals, batteries, used torpedoes, a shit ton of stuff that really shouldn't be in the ocean. So, you know, next time you are drinking from a straw, just think, at least you're not the US military. And of course, the Navy will not be responsible for cleaning it up or providing aid or medical tests to anybody whose health will suffer. The United States military and government in general has a gross negligence of the impact that it has on the environment, as well as capitalism as a whole, but we already talked about that. Individual people, as great as our intentions may be, we can't save the environment by using metal straws. Like, we can't save the environment by using biodegradable cutlery. We have to rely on the government because the government, you know, the role of the government is to protect its people. That's like politics 101, but that's not what actually happens because the government cares more about the money that it can make and the people that it can enslave to make more money, which is a whole other topic. Let's talk about prisons next. Yeah, that's a great topic, Ashton. Because the government doesn't care about its people. It cares about how much money it can make regardless of how many people it has to exploit or how many trees it has to cut down or how many gallons of toxic chemicals it has to jump into the ocean. The governments of capitalist systems care about money. They don't care about their people and they will do anything they can to get what they want. And what they want is more power and more money, which gives them more power, which gives them more money. It's a vicious cycle and it's not gonna end unless something radical happens. You can live a personally sustainable lifestyle. You can pull a Henry David Thoreau and go live in the forest next to some random lake that you decided you like. But at the end of the day, individual actions don't make huge changes. Giant corporations can make huge changes. Billionaires can make huge changes, but none of them are because all they care about is profit. And you're not gonna profit by saving the environment. Of course, the world might profit and the general health and well-being of the entire planet might profit, but they don't care about that and they care about themselves. So yeah, do I feel good about myself sometimes because I know that I'm not contributing to the fishing net in the ocean? Yeah, sure, but at the end of the day, even I know that me being a vegetarian doesn't matter. Because the thing is, no matter how hard I, you know, push my vegetarianism on everyone around me, the whole world isn't going to suddenly stop eating fish, and I don't expect it to. But I would prefer more sustainable practices, but the thing is, sustainable practices tend to be, you know, more expensive, and, and what was I just talking about? Profit over health, and profit over sustainability, and profit over everything, apparently, because that's just how the world works. I guess I should probably kind of bring it all back to performative environmentalism. I don't blame people for wanting to take individual actions to make the world better, but people also need to recognize that such little actions aren't gonna do anything and what we need is institutional change. And what we need to do is overthrow capitalism, but that is extremely difficult. And to do that, a lot more people need to be educated and a lot more people need to be aware of the bullshit the capitalism causes. And I already know that people are gonna disagree with me over this and like, I can't blame you. I know that what you've been taught your whole life is to, you know, use less water and don't drink from a plastic straw. But at the end of the day, it's a much bigger structural issue than that. Like, I don't know if it was a parody because at this point it was ridiculous, but there was a video recently of someone saying, you know, fuck plastic straws by having a cup of Starbucks, taking the plastic straw out, chucking it into the forest and putting a metal straw in or something. And I, I was just like, you could have just used that straw and thrown it out properly instead of fucking littering. And now you're just gonna have to use more water to wash that straw that you're using now that's a reusable straw instead of just using that one straw that one time and like not throwing it into the forest. I, I just, people are, mm, recognize that no matter how many things you do, it's statistically insignificant until the system that we currently have is dismantled and rebuilt into something completely different, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I guess just keep it in your heart 
that you are not personally responsible for climate change. And don't just take my word for it. Read the articles in the description. Watch other people's videos and read people's books and read people's articles about the environmental impact of the US military and how capitalism cannot coexist with positive climate change. If you want to make a real difference, the first step in that process, I, I don't know what word I was looking for there, but process works, um, is educating yourself. Find more resources, do more research, watch more videos, read more things, and get fucking radicalized because the only way that we can actually fight climate change is completely changing the system. Capitalism kills people every day, and if we don't fucking turn it around soon, it's gonna be killing a shit ton more people and a shit ton more animals, so get on it, kids. And honestly, if you're scared, you should be because it is scary what's happening and it's okay to be scared. Use that fear and turn it into anger and turn it into power. I guess I made this video to kind of express some of my anger as I do feel very relieved now, very at ease, um, as well as to just, as well as to maybe introduce some of you, if you're younger, to the concept that you're not responsible for giant environmental changes, but you can be responsible to help fight them and reverse them if you keep learning, keep educating yourself, keep educating others, and hey, if bring back the guillotine is what it takes, count me in. Anyways, here's the patch. Uh, I sewed this one on a while ago in another video that I don't remember what I talked about, but this is the new one, and it fits very nicely right next to it. I'm not gonna put on this jacket because it's summertime, and I'm just getting it ready for the winter, and or fall, and or spring. I honestly just wear this whenever it's cold enough for me to not die. All right. I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled out of my face tomorrow, so I gotta go get some rest and have a snack before midnight so that I can not die when I wake up tomorrow morning and I'm not allowed to eat. I also need to change out all my piercings to plastic retainers, which I can't really do because this one's a baby. Um, so I honestly, I'll figure it out. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I hope this wasn't too long. I don't think it will be. Um, again, please read the things that I've left in the description. If you don't believe me now, then those might help. And all of the things that I've linked probably also have links within them, so go wild, go crazy, educate yourself, get radicalized, I love you. Um, goodbye, I hope that you understand where I'm coming from. And if you are someone that uses metal straws, I'm not mad at you, I'm mad at capitalism, and I'm mad at the people that lied to you by saying that that can make a difference, when we all should know damn well by this point that the only thing that can make a difference is radical systemic change. Bye, love you, and I'll talk to you later, maybe.